by medical technicians. We also, in terms of uh, community health care workers, it's been a very fragmented system supported by NGOs. Uh, last year, the, um, the ministry decided that we, they would add community health care workers to the national health system. So this year is the first year that we will be adding community health care workers to the system. So in terms of uh, leveraging and mobilizing them in Mozambique, it's, it's been quite challenging. We've invested a lot of money and, and resources into trainings um, for nurses and doctors and other cadres. But when you go to the health facilities, um, they don't have the job aids, the equipment, the infrastructure that they need. So uh, one of the ideas that um, the Ministry of Health, uh, that we decided to look at was how do we improve that? How do we give them the tools to, to make their job, uh, so that they can um, perform? Um, so one of the things that uh, we did, sorry, one of the things that we looked at was introducing new mobile technologies in 2009 for the HIV program. We're using the HIV program as the entry point, but that will strengthen the systems, and we are going to be adapting it as well for other areas such as TB and malaria in the future. In terms of scale up, one of the projects has completed national expansion. Uh, in nine months, and we are on the other project, we are moving into national expense, expansion as we speak. We're working very closely. This is an initiative led by the National Health Institute, uh, led by Dr. Les Janney. Dr. Janney has a vision for the next 10 years, um, and his vision includes a strategy of including mobile, techno uh, mobile technologies um, to improve access and the quality of care for patients. So currently, we have a CD4 point of care machine uh, that we have evaluated, uh, not only in the lab for the quality of testing, but also in the field, in some very remote areas and some very high volume areas as well. So this point of care machine, it's a very small mobile machine. Uh, so the patient can receive test results in 20 minutes. Uh, another program that we've introduced, and this has now been completed nationally, are the SMS printers. Many of you may be familiar with them. And it's to improve the test result time, turnaround time from the lab to the patient. Um, we have introduced some other um, point of care technologies as well. For example, hemoglobin testing. What we're looking at for now in the next phase for 2011 is bring in a technology where you can get point of care uh, testing results at the health facility uh, in PCR and viral load, um, as well as some other areas for to test white blood cell count. And also we will be looking at potentially 2011, if not 2011, 2012, um, mobile testing for tuberculosis. What are the objectives of the point of care devices. Um, it's to strengthen the system, uh, to improve access, and to improve the quality of care. Uh, when we are introducing these new technologies, uh, we are looking at, a, at overall system strengthening. So we're not just putting the machines there. Uh, the machines go in. We have a mentoring team that goes in. We are also looking at also, it's in increasing the number of patients on uh, ART, so we're also looking at the medicine situation. So it's really important when we're introducing these mobile technologies that we're looking at all the different areas of the continuum of care. And so you can see what the expected results are in the area of clinical laboratory, mobility, and viability and system savings. One of the most important things that we are looking at um, is we'll decrease loss to follow-up. On average, in the HIV programs, uh, adult patients, we have a loss to follow-up rate of 30%. In pediatrics, we have a loss to follow-up rate of 60%. So we're investing a lot of time and resources um, in the system and in patients, and we're losing them. Um, one of the other areas is we're going to reduce the number of uh, patient visits. Right now, Mozambique has a very complex and cumbersome process for patients to access care. So for example, for a patient to get a CD4 result prior to these point of care technologies, they would have to come on average four to five times um, for the whole process to receive their uh, CD4 result. So we had a big loss to follow up there. Counseling sessions, you need to have three counseling sessions as well. So if you start adding up all the number of visits, the burden on the patient. 
So there's no wonder that we have a, um, a high loss to follow up rate. In terms of vi viability and system savings, we worked very closely uh, in terms of viability with the manufacturer on some of these devices so that they would come in for and they would be usable for resource limited settings. So they could be um, charged on a battery or they would last long for areas that didn't have electricity or anything like that. In terms of mobility, we went to the, the furthest reaches of the country and really tested in some um, very tough terrain and we'll talk, I'll talk a bit about that in a minute. Most of you, many of you have probably seen this black box. It's, the, uh, it's an SMS printer. So what we've developed is a very strong lab database. And uh, so, for example, for the PCR results coming for the early infant diagnosis program, the results are entered into the lab database. They hit send, goes to a server in the UK, and then comes back into and prints at the health centers in real time in a few minutes. We have now put these black boxes, these printers, in all the the health facilities providing ART in the country, over 350. So though it is an entry point, like I said, for PCR testing, we'll be adding TB results and others. What's really important looking at this is that um, it's really improving the productivity and motivation, but also the results turnaround time. Uh, the Minister of Health, when he was looking at it, when we were first introducing it after the evaluation, he said, so what you're telling me is by sending the results to London and then back to Mozambique, the patients are going to get the results faster than the paper-based system we have in Mozambique. Yes, he said, fine. Um, <laughs> one of the, um, I think there's a question this morning about confidentiality. And um, it goes by a GPRS, GPRS for codified data and confidentiality of results, which was one of the, the main factors and also Mozambique, GPRS is 1 16th of the cost of SMS transmission. The MCEL, our mobile, um, mobile company, has, we have an agreement with them that they're providing everything, um, providing, supporting the costs of the transmission and SIM cards and everything to do with, the, um, with that part of it, of the SMS. What the lab... What the database also gives us and at the server is in real time, we can see um, at every health facility how many results have been sent, how many are pending. And, and uh, so we can follow up at the health facility then to initiate those patients that are positive and to follow up in that. So this will be really um, to help strengthen the system overall in the future. I just wanted to show you this slide. So the first bar that you'll see um, on the very top, this was April 2009, and this was the whole system. So to take, and this is looking at um, enrolling infants that are HIV positive into the uh, into into care and to care and treatment. So you can see it was taking over six months. As most of you know from the share study, uh, positive infant, 50% of the positive infants will die by their second birthday. So we were really failing them when it was taking this long. And this is just an example of the urban uh, in Maputo City, uh, the capital of Mozambique. So if it was taking this long in the capital and urban sites, you can imagine how long it was taking in rural sites. Where we are today, in a very short period of time, we've worked with the labs, we've worked with um, the partners in, in various areas, as you can see along the system. So today, over 40% of the health facilities are getting the results within 28 days. And the national objective is then to initiate children um, in three to four months. And we hope that that will be reduced in the further years to come. So we've come a long way with just a little black box and um, a lot of motivation and, and partner and ministry coordination behind it. One of the other initiatives, as I mentioned, was uh, the CD4 machine. It's a very, it's a small CD4 machine. Um, there were skeptics saying, you know, uh, because of the, the lack of human resources, the skills, the, the access, could we really bring in a machine uh, that is this complex, that is doing a complex uh, result like a CD4? Well, it turned out it exceeded our expectations. Um, if you can see the second arrow that's showing downwards, that's a good thing. Um, we reduced the pre-treatment loss to follow-up by 88%, and this was following a cohort um, over a year. 
And in, on initiation, we improved initiation rates by 54%. And a lot of people will think, well, is that, does that mean you're adding extra patients and the burden onto the system? But these are existing patients that are coming um, to the health facilities. We are just initiating them a lot faster, um, which we need to do. And this will be especially important for the PMTCT program that we're prioritizing, um, obviously, this year with the new guidelines to really initiate the mothers faster and reduce transmission rates. So we do have community health care workers. Um, a lot of them are supported, obviously, by NGOs. Uh, this is just an example where we went up to the very northern part of the country called Nyasa. This is Martins. He is um, a community health care worker that has been trained, um, and that's the CD4 machine that he has there. Um, this community, there, there is no road access, and this project that we work with um, supports 35 communities of about 20,000 people. So the community health care workers go up by foot, and you can see that when we brought in the Pima, uh, this is what the CD4 machine is called, um, how greatly it improved uh, the testing. One of the, uh, we went up with the Ministry of Health in February of this year because uh, we really wanted to see what the impact would be on the community. So we went up to this village. There's about 600 people in the village, and they were all there. This was the first time a Ministry of Health official had ever, um, had ever visited this, this village. And, and people were standing up, men in particular, saying, I now know my CD4 count. I now know if I'm healthy or not. Thank you for bringing me, us the Pima. And, you know, we were stunned. You know, the Pima has now been, become synonymous in the vocabulary. And they said, what else are you bringing us? <laughs> so it's just, um, you know, how, how it's really empowered the patient as well. So not only are we improving the access and the quality of care and treatment, but also empowering the patients. When I talk about access, um, in the same area, we, um, <laughs> during the rainy season, when they can't get to the communities by foot, um, they use a kayak. So this is, once again, the Pima, the CD4 machine that's, that's going up by kayak as well to some of these communities. And uh, the results, uh, we do a lot of, in terms of system strengthening, we do a lot of QC with these results. Um, and looking at various areas of the system. And this community uh, project has, has been one of the top um, sites for the best, some of the best QC um, quality control results coming back. So it just proves that um, it can be done. So that's the end of my presentation. And I just wanted to thank, uh, acknowledge and thank the partners um, that have worked uh, with this project in the national expansion.